In this video, we're going to end our discussion of hyperbolic trig functions by doing some calculus with them. Now, back in our derivation, we learned that sinh of x is half of e to the x minus e raised to the power of negative x. And cosh of x has a similar formula, half e to the x plus e to the power of negative x. And so if I take the derivative of sinh, well, I'll have to take half the derivative of e to the x minus the derivative of e to the negative x. And when I take the derivative of e to the negative x, I'll have a negative one due to the chain rule. So that negative one will get multiplied by the minus sign, making a positive e to the negative x, which is exactly the formula for cosh. So the derivative of sinh of x is cosh of x. Let's take the derivative of cosh of x using its formula. And the derivative of e to the x will be e to the x. When I take the derivative of e to the negative x, I'll get the minus sign coming out from the chain rule. And now I have minus e to the negative x, which is exactly sinh of x. So the derivative of sinh is cosh. The derivative of cosh is sinh, no negative sign with the hyperbolic cosine. And then just like we did with the trig functions for the remaining functions, we can use um, the product rule or other rules of differentiation. So the product rule with tanch would be the derivative of sinh of x over cosh of x which would be, well, taking the derivative of the top times the bottom, that gives me cosh squared, subtract the uh, top times the derivative of the bottom, that's cinch squared, and that's gonna be all over the bottom squared, so all over cosh squared. Now, cosh squared x minus cinch squared x, that's our first identity, that's going to equal 1. So I've got 1 over cosh squared x, which is sech squared x. So reminds us of the derivative of tangent being secant squared. Now the derivative of tanch is sech squared. And then for the derivative of sech, we can use the power rule and the chain rule because we can think of sech as 1 over cosh. So that would be cosh of x raised to the power of negative one. Using the power rule, I'd have negative one come out in front and now subtract one. Now I have a, an exponent of negative two times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosh is cinch. So now I'll have negative cinch on top. On the bottom, I'd have cosh squared, but I'll write that as cosh times cosh because one over cosh is, cosh is sech, and sinh over cosh is tanch. So that gives me negative sech of x, tanch of x. So this is uh, one of the primary differences between the derivatives of the regular trig functions and the hyperbolic trig functions. Cosh has no negative sign. The derivative of cosh has no negative sign. But the derivative of sech does have a negative sign. So again, if we look at the formulas, here they all are. We could derive the remaining formulas using the same techniques. And so uh, the derivative of sinh is cosh. The derivative of cosh is sinh, no negative sign. The derivative of tanch is sech squared, but then sech, cosech, and koth all have negative signs for their derivatives. So let's work out an example here. Find the derivative of f of t, which is natural log of sinh of t. So we'll have to use the chain rule here. So the derivative of the outside would just be 1 over, and this is a mistake, it's not 1 over log of sinh of t, it's 1 over sinh of t. Let me make this 
correction as I go along here. All right. Well, then times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the inside is the derivative of sinh of t which is cosh of t and so then that is going to equal cosh of t over sinh of t and we can write that as cos of t. All right, let's look at the second example. Now this looks like a very simple integral. Right? We have integral from 0 to 1 of radical 1 plus x squared dx. But none of the techniques that we know so far would help us evaluate this integral, at least not to get the exact value. And even some of the techniques we're going to learn in the next week would help us, but it would result in a very complicated integral. And what we're going to do is not very simple either, but it is an alternative method. Now, when I see radical 1 plus x squared, one thing that I'm reminded of is our identity between cosh squared x and sinh squared x. We know that cosh squared x minus sinh squared x equals 1, or cosh of x is 1 plus radical of 1 plus sinh squared x. So maybe the substitution I should make here is let's have x equals sinh of u because then I'll have 1 plus sinh squared u under the radical sign, and that'll just be cosh of u. So dx will be uh, cosh of u du, and what I just said, radical 1 plus x squared would be radical 1 plus sinh squared u, which is cosh of u. Now to do the bounds, I'm going to have to think here because uh, u will be inverse sinh of x. So, but inverse sinh of x, we have a formula for it. It's natural log of x plus radical x squared plus 1. So when x equals 0, uh, u is just going to be 0 as well. Uh, when x equals 1, uh, u is not a nice a result is going to be the natural log of 1 plus radical 2. I put x 1 in the place of x, I'll get 1 plus radical 1 plus 1, which is radical 2 plus 1, the natural log of that. All right. So, in terms of u, our integral is integral from 0 to the natural log of 1 plus radical 2 of cosh of u times cosh of u du. So that's cosh squared u. Now to evaluate this, there's no power rule uh, for the antiderivative of cosh squared. Uh, power rule only works with uh, powers. So it would work with u squared, but not cosh squared u. But I can remember my other identities involving cosh of 2x. That was 2 cosh squared x minus 1. I can solve that for cosh squared x, and that would be 1 half cosh 2x plus 1. So I'll replace cosh squared u with 1 half cosh of 2u plus 1. So now take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of cosh of u of 2u uh, would require a u substitution, but it's very simple. So we'll do that mentally. That will give me a 1 half sinh of 2u. Antiderivative of 1 is just u. 
and I still have the one half that was out in front of the integral sign. I have to evaluate that between zero and the natural log of one plus radical two. Now the value at zero is just zero. zero u equals zero, sine of u or a cinch of u is also zero. So I only need to worry about the value from the top limit here. The, and so that'll be one half times one half making one quarter cinch of two, so this is two u, so two times the natural log of one plus radical two plus natural log one plus radical two. Now, we could leave it this way, but uh, we're learning about hyperbolic sines and cosines and logs in this chapter. So let's see if we cannot simplify this expression. So let's look at cinch of two natural log of one plus radical two. Well, the definition of cinch is, uh, oh, before we get to that, uh, let's use a log property and bring the multiplier two inside the log as an exponent. Now let's use the definition of cinch. It would be uh, e to the natural log of one plus radical two squared minus, well, e to that negative power. So I'll write that as one over e to the natural log of one plus radical two squared with a one half out in front. Now, natural log and the exponential function are inverses of each other. So that's just going to be one half and then inside the brackets, one plus radical two squared plus one over one plus radical two squared. And we can simplify that even further. If I use FOIL to multiply this out, I'm going to get one plus two radical two plus two, which will be three plus two radical two, plus then one over three plus two radical two. And let's simplify that by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. Now in the bottom, when I multiply the conjugate, I'll get three squared minus two rad two squared, that's nine minus eight, or just one. So I just get half of three plus two rad two plus three minus two rad two. So that'll just be half of six, which is three. So this whole expression, I still, didn't, I still have the one quarter, but the cinch of two natural log one plus radical two equals three. So in the end, the value of that integral is three fourths plus natural log of one plus radical two. What about the inverse hyperbolic trig functions? Well, I could use their formulas directly. I could say, I know since inverse has the formula natural log of x plus radical x squared plus one. And so the derivative of that would be, well, one over the input times the derivative of the input, applying the chain rule. And so the derivative of radical x squared plus one, that would be uh, one over two radical x squared plus one times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So the twos divide out. Let me write this uh, as a single fraction. So I have a common denominator of radical x squared plus one. And when I do that, because remember the twos have divided out, I have radical x squared plus one plus x here. But then down here in my first fraction, the denominator is x plus radical x squared plus one. So since the order of addition doesn't matter, those are the same thing and they'll divide out. And I'm left with just one over radical x squared plus one. So the derivative of inverse cinch is one over radical x squared plus one. And that tells me that the antiderivative 
of dx over radical x squared plus one is inverse sinh of x plus c. Now, another way that we could have gone about that, and let's use this technique with uh, Kosh. Remember that if y equals the uh, f inverse of x, then x equals f of y. And the derivative, we can calculate the derivative of f inverse of x as the reciprocal of d dy of f of y. So let's do that where y equals inverse cosh of x. So x equals cosh of y. We'll need to use our identity that cosh squared y minus sinh squared y equals one. So the derivative of inverse cosh of x would be one over the derivative with respect to y of cosh of y. So that's one over sinh of y. But we wanna get this back in terms of x. So we'll use our identity to write sinh of y as radical cosh squared y minus one. And then we know that cosh of y is x. So that's going to be one over radical x squared minus one. So the derivative of inverse cosh is one over radical x squared minus one. So using either one of these techniques, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And then the antiderivative of dx over radical x squared minus one is inverse cosh of x plus c. So we could use either one of those methods and we find that the derivative of inverse tanch is one over one minus x squared. So I didn't do the other uh, three, but um, you can use that same technique to find the formula for the derivative of inverse sech, inverse cosech, and inverse koth. So let's finish with another example. Let's find the slope of the line tangent to y equals inverse sech of tangent of x when x equals pi over four. So the inner function here is just the regular tangent function. So uh, since the sine, cosine, tangent, they're all built on the circle. Sometimes they're called circular trig functions. So our outer function is a hyperbolic trig function. The inner function is a circular function. So we have inverse sinh of tangent of x. And we want to know what is the slope of the tangent line when x equals pi over 4. So I need to calculate the derivative. The formula for the derivative of inverse sech is one over radical one plus the input squared. And then I'll have to use the chain rule, multiply that by d dx of uh, tangent of x. And the derivative of tangent of x is just secant squared of x. And now if I remember my identity for the tangent function, one plus tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x. So I can simplify this expression even further. It would be secant squared of x over radical secant squared of x, which is just secant of x. So the last thing I need to do is evaluate this when x equals pi over four, and I get the value of pi over 